What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about Tesla. We got some news hot off the press. Tesla completes acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. This has been a long time in the making. All of you longs and long time uh, people watching the channel know I've been waiting for this to go through. I made three videos on why I think this is such a big deal for Tesla. You know, Tesla is a company that very, very rarely makes acquisitions. So when they do, it is something to watch for and, and figure out why they're acquiring this company. So now Tesla has completed this acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. Um, it, the, the total value of the deal is about $240 million. It's an all stock deal. Every shareholder of Maxwell will receive 0.0139 shares of Tesla stock for each share of Maxwell stock they own. The deal got approved with 79% of shareholders uh, choosing to tender their shares and go with Tesla. This is awesome news. I was frankly very worried about whether this deal would pass or not because previously they only had about like, uh, you know, way less than like 25 or 20% of the shares tendered and wasn't increasing. They had to extend the, the deal deadline twice. But now they've they've done it. It's the deal's done. Um, nobody really cares. Tesla stock is down about one or two percent as I make this episode. But I am incredibly excited because I think Maxwell Technology um, and what they're doing with the dry battery electrode breakthrough that they've developed could have huge implications across Tesla's battery production line and battery technology that will result in vastly better consumer products. We're talking about cars that are have cheaper batteries that last way longer um, and cars with way better range all at the same time. That is the innovation that Maxwell brings, and for a price of $240 million. I think this could actually end up creating billions of dollars for Tesla over the long term. So today we're going to break down what Maxwell does, why Tesla bought them, and why I'm pumped. Maxwell um, is this sleepy little company. You know, at first glance, you're like, why is Tesla buying a San Diego-based ultracapacitor company founded in the 60s? The stock was at 40 bucks like decades ago. Then it was at like $3 a share when Tesla decided to start bidding for the company. So you're like, why is Tesla, this super high-tech battery company, interested in an ultra-capacitor company? First of all, that it didn't really make sense on the surface. But diving into it, there is one little storyline that first caught my attention, which is that Elon Musk, um, before actually going to Silicon Valley and starting all these software companies, was originally interested in researching uh, ultra-capacitors as a next-generation energy storage device to get a PhD at Stanford, researching how these ultra-capacitors could be integrated into next-generation electric vehicles. So we know that Elon already has a soft spot for ultra capacitors but upon looking into that the cost and actually feasibility and, and you know value provided of ultra capacitor tech today that maxwell has seemingly wouldn't have a huge impact on Tesla's products. Maybe you could make a use case that the regenerative braking of the semi truck or the acceleration of the Roadster could use an uh, ultra capacitor, but I'm not convinced that that was really why they did the deal. But further looking into the deal, Maxwell had been developing a technology for several years based on the way they uh, built their ultra capacitors. They figured out a new way to build lithium ion battery cells with something called dry battery electrode technology. This is the game changer. This is what you need to research. All of my homework says that the dry battery electrode technology technology is why Tesla made this deal. What does this dry battery electrode technology do? And I'm going to put a link to all my old episodes, which are like, I think over an hour of content total about this. So they'll go way more in depth, but this is the, the, the slide that really sums it all up here. This is a transformational battery technology enabling the electric vehicle megatrend. First, let's start with that top line, energy density. So they say they've already demonstrated 300 watt hours per kilogram with a pass to 500 watt hours per kilogram. This is huge. The current energy density of the state-of-the-art Tesla car, which is like the best in the industry, per my understanding, is about 250 or 260 watt hours per kilogram. So we're looking at about a 15% increase in the minimum of energy efficiency. And they also said they've demonstrated a path to 500 watt hours per kilogram. And remember that whole electric airplane VTOL jet idea that Elon has, that is supposed to be feasible at an energy density of 450 watt hours per kilogram. So in theory, this energy density breakthrough could allow them to go all the way to electric airplanes if it scales. So that's thing number one to get with this technology, huge breakthrough in energy density. And thing number two that makes a huge difference, especially given the autonomy investor day, especially given the robo taxi announcement of the Tesla network, that is the extended battery life. So these Maxwell batteries can increase battery life by 2x. So the finished product is way more durable. And you may remember at the autonomy day, Elon said the current battery packs go about 300 to 500,000 miles, um, you know, life cycle. But now they're thinking about doubling that with the next generation battery pack introduced next year, which could go a million miles. My guess is that was reliant on this technology from Maxwell. Then we've got the third thing, which is a cost reduction. There's a 16 production, 16x production capacity density increase 
increase. What does this mean? Well, the biggest thing about the dry battery electrode is that it's a dry battery electrode versus the industry standard of a wet battery electrode, which it means you have to coat the electrode in this extremely toxic solvent, which is extremely polluted. So you coat it in this toxic solvent and then you have to have a massive drying oven to dry all these cells to get that solvent to dry. Well, if you have a dry battery electrode with no solvent, you A, you don't have those chemicals, so it's more sustainable a production process, and B, you don't have these massive drying ovens that, in my opinion, are probably taking up a huge amount of space at the Gigafactory. So that massive decrease in production, so first of all, you don't have to wait for the things to dry, you don't have to use all the chemicals, and you don't need the space for the ovens. So this all leads to huge cost reductions. And so what Maxwell's saying is we not only have better energy density, not only have longer life, but we have a 10 to 20% reduction in cost. And so this is incredible. And then the last point is what I just mentioned about that it's there's no solvents required and you can use next generation materials. So this sounds almost too good to be true. So now you might be saying like, okay, well, okay, great. You know, the stats look great on paper, but Tesla bought it. It's probably all vaporware. You know, all the skeptics are saying this will never actually happen. Those numbers won't get hit. Well, here's, here's my understanding of how this went down and why I'm a believer that this is a lot more closer to reality than just, you know, numbers on a spreadsheet. Because if you read into Maxwell's development and their quarterly conference calls, and this is what I made my other videos about, in Q1 2018, they began initiating with a huge auto OEM to pilot this technology and essentially scale it up and, and do a proof of concept. And this is exactly in line with what Elon and Musk and J.B. Straubel have long said. They're like, look, we're the biggest battery manufacturer electric vehicle company in the world. We are constantly scouring for new battery breakthroughs and innovations. Every single person that has a battery breakthrough, sh we should be the first person they come to because we have the most batteries to make most advantage and take make the most money out of that breakthrough. And so they're constantly seeing these new battery technologies, testing them, validating them, and they're extremely picky about what they buy because if it's not been validated and it won't work, they don't care. And so what happened with Maxwell? In Q1, they do a pilot program with an anonymous auto OEM. My guess is Tesla. Q2, they say that that auto OEM actually brought in its own new cell chemistry to test the wet electro or to test the dry electrode. So actually wanted to make basically custom cells that it designed using this dry battery electro process. So my guess is that was once again, Tesla saying, okay, well, if we bring in our chemistry, let's see if this still works. Then in the Q3 2018 Maxwell earnings conference call, I just want to read you this quote. Next, let me provide an update on our dry battery electro technology, which I believe is the future crown jewel for our company. Execution on refining our patented technology and to scale up of our cell building capabilities is progressing according to plan and creating significant long-term opportunities. Product samples delivered to potential partners are being very well received and new business activity is growing. Understand, this is a longer-term mission for Maxwell, and it will take time for revenue to materialize, but when it does, we expect to change it to change the landscape of the company. We have already initiated to scale up all of the pilot line. We are preparing to accelerate investment immediately following the execution of a commercialization agreement with a new partner. So in Q1, we have the initial test. In Q2, we have the test with the chemistry. In Q3, they're saying we've ramped this up, and, and we're giving the product samples, and the pilot line is working well. So Tesla actually built up pilot line producing these cells is my understanding. And instead of doing that execution of a commercialization agreement, Tesla came in and you can read this in the SEC filings of the deal, which is in one of my old videos. And they basically said, okay, we want to buy you. We don't want to do a commercialization deal. And then they also even blackmailed them basically and said, if you don't let us buy you, then we're going to stop doing business with you and we won't buy all these dry battery electrodes. But so on the flip side, Maxwell Technology is saying, crap, we just told all our investors, this is the future of the company. We're going to make a ton of money from it. And if we don't let Tesla buy us, they won't even buy the customer to buy ourselves. So Maxwell had its hand tied behind its back against the wall saying either Tesla's going to buy us and we have to let them buy us, or they're going to drop what was our biggest contract. And then financially we're screwed. We're losing money and our stock's going to tank. So they were basically forced to make this deal. And, and that is how it all went down. There's a lot of puzzle pieces going on here. Um, and it, and, and I'm personally extremely excited because tying this all together on the Q1 conference call, this is what really like, I jumped out of my seat when I heard this. So Colin Rush, I believe from UBS goes, and then as you look at the Maxwell technology integration post close, how quickly do you be, do you be able, how quickly do you think you'll be able to integrate that technology into the battery production? And could you comment on the potential for chemistry and form factor changes as you get it integrated? Elon goes, I mean, you're really asking some pretty 
super secret sauce questions here. I think, yes, we'll have, I think, probably an investor day like Autonomy Day, maybe later this year or early next year, just to go over the cell and battery technology and future strategy and think this will be very informative, but we do recognize the criticality of this. So Elon even says basically that the Maxwell technology is the secret sauce. Once they get this integrated, they're going to do a whole investor day like the Autonomy Day about battery technology. And my guess is, what are they going to talk about at that battery investor day? I'm going to give you a sneak preview. It is that slide that I just showed you about the Maxwell Technologies. They're going to talk about an improving roadmap of energy efficiency, a way improved energy life, a huge improvement in cost reduction, um, and a much more sustainable production process. I mean, Tesla, according to the research I've done, you know, with Matt Joyce, who has that whole beautiful efficiency table that sums up the efficiency of the, the motor and the drivetrain and the batteries, you know, Tesla is significantly ahead in the efficiency of its batteries and the cost of its batteries already with the technology it has. Right now, we're looking at significant step functions improvements in a, in a bunch of different aspects of its battery technology. So yet again, we're going to see Tesla improve with not only its batteries are about to get way better, they're already the industry's best, they're about to get better, and they're already the industry's cheapest, and they're about to get cheaper. This is why I've been so excited about this acquisition and saying that it could put Tesla, who is already several years ahead of battery technology, even a few years more ahead. The gap is widening. You know, legacy OEMs are not catching up. Tesla's getting further ahead. And you might be saying like, okay, well, if this is only 240 million, BMW, Audi, Volkswagen, GM, Ford, Rivian, they all got 240 million. Why didn't they, they buy Maxwell? First tidbit is in the SEC filings, they say they solicited Maxwell to all, a bunch of other companies. No one was interested. So I think apparently no one cared or wanted it. Why? Because my in theory is that Tesla, if you look at actual battery cell production, is the only one of these car companies who's building hundreds of thousands of EVs a year, who's committed to building millions of EVs a year in the very near term, and who's actually assembling the battery packs. They have the Gigafactory. This vertical integration at such a massive scale means the return on investment for that $240 million check that Tesla writes is vastly superior to any other OE auto OEM who's building way less EVs and not even building their own batteries. So it just doesn't it makes sense for them to acquire them. Like the ROI is, it doesn't add up. And so this is a beautiful example of why Tesla's vertical integration of building the Gigafactory, of being the leading OEM, of being the first into electric vehicles gave them, you know, the fiscal engineering prowess to essentially acquire a breakthrough technology and integrate that into their stack and allow them to get further ahead. And so this is to me, uh, basically result of Tesla's first mover advantage. And that is why they were the only one who was interested in this deal. And so Anyway, that sums it up. I'm incredibly excited about this acquisition. I'm going to be, now that the deal's done, I think Tesla can slowly start talking about it, whether they wait until the battery investor day, who knows, but I'm super excited about what they're going to, about the battery investor day and what this new technology is going to mean for Tesla's product roadmap. I think it's going to be a 400 mile EV that can last a million miles. I mean, this is going to be the game changer that allows Tesla to really be, you know, have a lead on this autonomous taxi race where you need cars that last a really long time, that are super reliable, that are super efficient, and Tesla's, and are super cheap, and Tesla's leading there and only getting further ahead. So uh, th this is so, so exciting. And then you also have that ultra capacitor business, which I talked about, you know, Elon is fascinated by ultra capacitors. So I think if they make a breakthrough in the cost of the ultra capacitor or keep improving that technology, that's something that from Maxwell could also work its way into Tesla's product pipeline. So tons of excitement here. The market doesn't care, but I think in terms of the technology of Tesla, it just got a lot better today. And this makes me super, super excited about the long-term prospects of this company. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. Um, please leave it below. Uh, anything about the Maxwell Technologies acquisition, I want to get all of your thoughts and ideas. Huge shout out to all our supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much for funding the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.